In the town of Spindale, North Carolina is where you will find one of the greatest musical treasures to ever come out of Rutherford County. Those that know him and those that only know about him refer to this individual as the banjo maker, a term of admiration and respect throughout the musical community. But as he told me, he just preferred to be called by his name, Charles Gilbert. This is where I found Charles Gilbert, just a few minutes away from the music store and what others might find fascinating or somewhat cautious to step into. He just calls it his wood shop. Uh, back when I was 12 years old, I had a banjo and was learning to pick some, you know, and I tore this finger off oh, wow. on a, a cow chain swing. I was pushing a little girl and enjoying pushing her, you know, and so uh, swinging her and when she was, went away from me one time on the swing, my finger, uh, finger caught in the link of that chain and just jerked it in two. Just jerked the bone, bone sticking out there. <laughs> but Uncle, Uncle Dave Macon used to come on at 9.15 uh, when I was just a boy and I really enjoyed hearing him he was on the Grand Ole Opry, and I enjoyed hearing him, and I've just always been interested in the banjo. I don't think there's anything sounds as good as a banjo, so it's a shame I never could pick, but I guess I got the closest thing to it when I decided to try to make some. <laughs> and I don't know, in the, in the 1990s, uh, I got a hold of a disease that polymyalgia rheumatica and I just figured I'd already retired and I figured I'd, uh, when, I, when I realized I had that, uh, and I realized I needed something to sort of occupy my interest, you know, so I just started seriously messing with the banjo. I'd buy old stuff and tear it apart and see what made it tick, you know, and, and just begin in the 90s to, to try to make something. He started with a kid banjo and honed his skills from there, making many of the parts from discarded banjos and many from complete scratch. Improvising with items you'd never believe, yet seemed to give his just as good of a sound, if not better, than the name brands. You got to, the poor man got to do poor ways. That is, do what works. That is mandolin tuners. Yeah. It's been took off, and I cut them in two, and... It works. It works, and, and, and what's wrong with that? But I guess nothing's wrong nothing with it. Nothing wrong with it. I do things like, uh, uh, I use, part of the time I use uh, vinyl side and then rip it up and use my binding up the side of the neck out of that and I can't tell the difference when I get it done. It's something I bought or something I just made, you know. And uh, I make my pull bands and I got a trick there that makes bends it in a circle, you know. And I make my uh, uh, rims and make my necks, a lot of them. Trade for old stuff and re rework it, put tone rings in it. And that pipe laying there, that's a 10 inch pipe. And I found out if I cut off a half inch off of the end of that, it's, it's not hardly 11 inches. 
but uh, it shows you can improvise a little and and turn out pretty good if you uh, if you just experiment. So I cut about a half inch off of them, off of that pipe, and use it for a tone ring. And it, it makes a good sounding tone ring. When I asked him how long it takes to make just one banjo, his response was nothing less than astonishing. I guess it would take me uh, 75 hours, probably. 75 hours to yeah, make one band. probably. Wow. He says that he's not sure how many he's made. He's lost count over the years. But including the ones that he has tinkered on, ones that he's fixed for other people, and ones that didn't go so well in the beginning, that it would be well over 100. But I, I just do everything really the hard way. I, <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't have any special equipment. Uh, about the best, uh, the most special equipment I've got, and that's not equipment, it's a being, and that's the good Lord. I talk to Him quite a bit when I'm, when I'm doing my work. But I, I don't consider that I'm a banjo maker. I, I just do, I just do what I do, and really don't think much about it. You mentioned what? the music store. Where do you sell and how do you sell most of your banjos? Over there. B Sharp? Yeah. Stanley sells them for me. The music store that he's referring to is B Sharp, located in downtown Spindale, where Stanley Thomas picked on one of Mr. Gilbert's banjos while I was there. <laughs> That's one that he pretty much with the whole banjo. Yeah. This right here is an old banjo that he just rebuilt, and it's oh, probably from the 20s. You can walk into B Sharp, and all you have to do is ask for one of the banjo makers' banjos, and Stanley Thomas will get one down for you. And as soon as you hear it play, you'll fall in love with that sound and walk out the proud new owner of one of Mr. Gilbert's banjos. But I, I don't consider that I'm a banjo maker. I, I just do, I just do what I do and really don't think much about it. This is The Thompson Report.